Let's see. Okay. Well, welcome um, this evening to our Blackboard Upgrade webinar. I'm Laura Madden. I'm here with Academic Innovations and eLearning. And I'm going to talk about, first, go over what's happening with the upgrade real quick. And um, then we'll talk about importing and exporting. It's actually backwards. It's export and then import um, to get started on getting your spring 2016 um, course shells together and um, some of that timeline because of the timeline. And then I do have some other slides after that about um, some of the user interface changes. They're not really big, but a couple are pretty powerful. And so I like to share those with faculty so you have an idea um, of, of what, are the, what are the some of the changes in the upgrade. Most of this upgrade happens to just be strength, and they're moving it to a new environment. And um, hopefully that'll make it a lot more stable. You know, we've been trying to do that for years, right? So. Um, We'll talk about that. And I'm going to try to hit present on this. And then if one of you could give me um, a yay or nay if this presentation thing shows right. So <laughs> I'm going to click here. And it should now be showing um, full screen with the Blackboard upgrade. Oops, it unscreened. What just happened? OK, there we go. Oh, there we go. All right, so hopefully we ha you can see um, the Blackboard upgrade slides. Pretty simple. Um, First, I'll talk real quick about this. The um, reason we're doing this is, of course, for the winter upgrade, which is to the new version, 9.1. They're naming it October 2014. Um, we're moving to this better environment. But to do that, we actually at IT, not we, because I'm not IT, but those guys, um, have actually created a new environment for us. So instead of just updating in the old server, they're actually putting this into a whole new server environment. So currently, like this little graph shows, um, the Spring 13 version is the current version, and then the new 9.1 um, is going to be over here, and it opened on November 9th for access. So what they've put in there is the Spring 2016 course templates, and the older courses, some of the spring, summer 2015 and older courses that might have been in your account um, will be showing up in that new environment. Those are duplicated in the old environment currently, except for the spring 2016 courses. They're only going to create those in the new environment. Um, and that's kind of why we're talking about this. So for those of us who like to get started early, and get our spring courses ready before the winter break, or at least get, get it started, we're going to talk about um, how to move your fall 15 course environment um, out of fall, or a copy of it out of fall, and then pull it into the spring 16 environment. And actually, I'll have time. Um, we'll have time for you to actually go ahead and log in, and you can do this. You'll, you'll be able to follow these instructions and start moving your course content over um, so that you can plan um, your upgrade and the, or plan your 2016, uh, what do you call it, edits and updates. And the reason, again, to do that is now, earlier than later, is that um, to move the fall 2015 courses and like all the, all the um, activity and enrollments and all the things that are in there, IT has to wait until the very last day that um, faculty and students are using that environment to turn it off. They can't move them until they're turned off. So those are going to be moved um, after between December 23rd and January 1st, and hopefully sooner than later. But they're giving themselves that whole window to make sure they can get all that content moved. So on January 2nd, when we log in on Blackboard from our website, um, we'll be logging into one instance that has all of our stuff. And if we've worked on our spring 2016 courses early, we should be able to open those up and all that information will be there and they'll be more, they'll be ready for the students to start classes sooner. So does that make sense? Yes. Yes, yeah, OK. Um, so let's see, the next thing, oops, let me hit this again, is just to kind of go over those steps. Um, if you are familiar at all with e export and copy from Blackboard, in any of your course shells under course management, so picture on the left-hand side, um, the options are here under packages and utilities. And instead of doing course copy, because we're 
going to bring this copy of information out of one server and into another, we can't use the copy feature. So we're going to move down to the next one and we're going to export the course. Um, when you select this, it actually gives you an additional window that looks more like this. <laughs> um, and there'll be a button at the top that says export package. So we're here. So we're under our course management, export course. And in the number three section is really what we need to pay the most attention to. It's going to tell us what course we're in that we're exporting a copy of the materials from. We're going to select all the buttons using the select all. But in your course, if you deselect student help, course evaluation, and instructor help, that'll keep you from copying old material in those areas. Um, from your old course because the Blackboard Policy Committee has done a new um, zero template that we've created the course shells in. And so the student help and instructor help and the course evaluation links are all updated in there. So you don't want to copy duplicate information or old links in there. So um, that's just a, a tip for actually every semester. <laughs> so if you're copying um, or exporting, uh, not copying that, that material in is, is a good idea. Um, hang on, my Mac's being funny. OK. Once you do that function, you've selected everything and submitted, you're going to get a green bar. And I can actually show you this live in a sec. I just want to get through this. Um, that says that's, that's working. It's doing something. And you'll see the first picture up here, it says the buttons and the refresh little refresh button. Sometimes, depending on the size of your course, you might have to wait a few minutes for the Blackboard uh, software to actually zip that file. So just be patient. <laughs> so again, another reason to do this is if you have a big course, you can get this done a little bit earlier. Um, and you can click the refresh button. I've actually had the best luck kind of going out of this export area and then coming back in, and that zip file will pop right in there. Um, and then we're going to save that zip file. So the idea is we've now made an exportable copy of everything in our course shell. And it's zipped it all up into a nice little package. And then I'm going to hover over this thing and get the little menu. And it says select open. Again, I'll do this live for you in just a sec. And then you're going to save that file onto your computer. Um, this picture is the Mac file saver. If you are on a PC, it'll look a little different. But you want to make sure not to open it, <laughs> not to unzip it, and to just save the zip file somewhere in your downloads or on your desktop so that you can find it again easily. Um, the next step, and I have an edge tip for you that I'll put in the, the thing in just a sec here too to follow along so you have something to, to follow along again if you do this for multiple classes, um, is the new Blackboard server is at this new URL, which is no, with no Ws, just the blackboard.uaa.alaska.edu. If you've not been there before, you can go ahead and get a, open a browser and go there and log in with your same Blackboard credentials. And you'll see the, sh uh, the shells, the, the spring 2016 course shells for all the courses you're signed up to teach um, for spring 2016. And then some of your older courses, your spring 15, summer 15, um, and a, a couple more, I think. Um, so when you're in there, you're going to come back to the course management panel in the new course that you want to bring stuff in, that you want to bring in your zip file. And there's two import features here. One's covered up with red because we're not using it. But the one we want to select is import package. Um, and then we're going to see this interface. So it's going to tell you the destination course ID is the course you're in that you're bringing the, the um, course content into. And it's just like you know attaching anything inside a computer anymore. You click Browse My Computer. And then you go find that zip file, um, which is, again, another good reason not to unzip it because if you unzip it, it'll it won't come, in, come back in correctly. Um, and then you just select it. It'll show you under this where the red arrow is. It'll show you that you've attached that file. I've been having good luck by clicking the Select All button in number three on this. And it seems to bring the content in a little faster. Um, but again, it's, it's going to be the opposite action that we did before, which is we're going to select the zip file and import it, and then Blackboard's going to take some time to unzip that file and put all the pieces you know, into your uh, course shell. Um, let me get out of this real quick and show you how that looks live. 
um, if you have any questions, uh, you can let me know. So I'm going here. Hopefully you can see this is my workshop folder, or not folder, <laughs> my workshop Blackboard course. And on the bottom left here under um, course management, I've got the packages and utilities. And it's just these again, export archive course. I've actually done this one three times today because I've done it for <laughs> a bunch of um, examples. But again, if you look, it shows this file. It says export file and then the name of my class. And then it'll say .zip, so that's pretty clear. And then to download this, I go ahead and select this menu and click open. And again, I'm on a um, Mac, so I'm not sure if this part opens for you. But it's going to ask me, where do I want to save that file? So I'm going to go save it. Then I'm going to log in over here. And if you haven't done so, I suggest you can go in here. It's kind of fun. This will be on January 2nd. This is going to be the doorway that we go into all of our Blackboard environments. Same credentials as before. And I'm going to log in. Um, one thing I do want to tell you while you're on here is this in the center, there's this My UA Courses module. This is under testing right now because we're still kind of in a testing phase with IT. Please don't use the links on here because it says your Fall 15 course is here, but it's not, and it's a little confusing. Um, but the My Courses link um, is over here on the far right-hand side. And this is that module you can personalize it and change it around later if you want to. If you don't like this My UA Courses, you can get rid of it. Um, but I'm going to come down, because I have a million courses, here we go, to my Spring Workshop shell. And if you see, it looks real similar. It's got a couple of different features, though, that I'm going to show you. And then I'm going to go back down to Packages and Utilities, and I'm going to use the Import Package. Again, I've done this already twice, like I showed you before. Um, and this Import Package button allows you to do exactly what the pictures were showing. So you know that what class you can verify the class you're in. This is where I want my stuff. Browse my computer. It's going to go out and have you look for it. I'm not going to click it again because um, it's going to lock up my machine here. And then I hit the Select All button so that um, I make sure to pull in all that information. And down at the bottom, it's a Submit. Now, this is still going to do a similar function as the course copy and export when we're in the same environment, which is it's going to bring everything sort of to the bottom. So your left navigation um, is going to be a little bit out of um, order. And your customization might have disappeared. It kind of depends on um, how much content you have in there. So you still have the option, once you get all your stuff in here, to go back to your customization, you know, if you want to change your colors and, you know, um, change your teaching style and those things and make buttons or not have buttons, whatever it works best for your course, you still have that option. Um, and you also may need to drag and drop your buttons on your left nav to put it in the order that you prefer. Um, and there might be some extra buttons from the template, which, of course, you can use the little um, navigation menu, you can either hide them or delete them or name them something else and use that space for something different. So um, you're definitely used to all the controls you had in the other environment, um, even with this ex export import process. Do you have any questions about that? Lauren, you have, I see on the screen you have two announcements buttons and you said that happened when you imported it. Um, does it matter which one you delete? Do they both work the same way? Um, that's a good question. Yeah, the tool buttons, it doesn't matter which one you delete. So um, because okay. it connects to a tool. So I can get okay. rid of this one down here at the bottom. And it's okay. going to delete. And it'll say, I'm just going to do it because it's my class. Um, I'm going to delete it. It's going to say, are you sure? I'm going to say, yeah. <laughs> but then, see, so that one's gone. But this announcement at the top is connected to my announcements, because that's a tool. Just like the session okay. board is a tool, it's okay. the same kind of thing. So that was a great question. Yeah, don't be too scared. <laughs> and you know, honestly, if you delete a tool, like the announcements, you can always put one back 
using this plus okay. button and re-adding that to right. the link um, here. So if you accidentally get rid of your discussion board link and you're like, oh gosh, I wanted that, your discussion board stuff will still be in the back end. You just have to re-establish um, the button on the navigation bar by using this add to a link feature. So that was a great question. Yeah. So that's really great. Um, my suggestion would be, and I suggest this all the time, <laughs> even when we were doing it before, if you're teaching um, like a couple sections of the same class and you're using kind of this, a similar shell, you might go ahead and import your material into your first section and fix it up in the spring area and then copy that one over to your second inside the new environment just for time management and I want to rebuild too. Um, there is, it's not going to show well in this one, but let me show you in a different class. There is, if you haven't seen it before, I'm going to find my class. Oh, there it is. Okay, my old class here. So this is my spring 15 class. So this is out here. Oh, and not the student input. I will show you that. Hold on one second. Um, let me show you this course tool real quick, and then I'll answer that question, Jean. So here in my class, under course tools in course management, it's called, there's a thing called date management. So say I'm teaching this class two, sem two times in the semester. I can fix it all up for my Monday, Wednesday class. And then I can copy a copy of that to my Tuesday, Thursday shell. And then I can run this date management report. I'm going to click start. It's going to take a second here. Um, Depending on how much stuff you have in your class, this could take a little bit longer, but it usually seems to be pretty quick. And because I said the word pretty quick, there it goes. OK, <laughs> and then I go to next. And it gives me a report back here. And if you're using, due, if you set up all your due dates, and if you're using availability like start and end date for items and assignments and tests, you can use this little feature right here. And you can edit it right here in this line to match your schedule. And then when you click the green X or green check mark, it saves it and it updates it not only on this list, but in the content area that it lives and in the grade center column. So this is pretty awesome sauce. <laughs> so um, I highly suggest you use this tool because it makes it a lot faster um, for you to clean up your class. Um, and remember, uh, and due dates on assignments and um, on tests, Unless you have the assignment or test go away, like have an end date when they can't see it or access it anymore, students can still turn things in. So if you have like soft due dates, if you're like, well, I like everything to be due Wednesday at 7 o'clock, um, you can put those dates in there. And even if the students turn it late, then it shows late in the grade center. But here it keeps, this is where it keeps it clean and you can clean it up faster instead of having those due dates in the content area. So anyway, that's kind of a freebie. Um, if you hadn't seen that before, date management. This is how I do all my classes because I have a ton of assignments listed. Um, and it just makes life a lot easier. Now to go back to your question, um, Jane, about the, let's see, here we go. It's uh, export. When we're exporting, export package, um, down here we selected the course materials. Oh, do I have a discussion board in here? I don't know if I do. OK, here. Um, if you have discussion board selected, you can choose include starter posts or include only the forums with no starter port posts. This will actually keep, keep just the questions, the original questions that you made or the forums that you've created. And it won't have any of the student data. It technically doesn't bring over any student data unless you ask it to, if that makes sense. If you have a problem with that or it doesn't come over the way you expect, let me know and we'll we'll play with it. Um, yeah. Sometimes I actually do different discussion board questions, so I usually kind of just redo my discussion board each time. But if you love your if questions are working, then you just would select one of these two, include just the forums, and then it would just be the questions and that um, that you've created for the students to to comment or to talk about. So yeah, that works works out well there. All right. Um, let me show you a couple of features, unless you have any more questions about the export-import process. Oh, let me give you the um, place where the tutorial lives here. That's it. Uh, 
Oops. Okay, now that I'm typing it in the, the box, I can't think of it. Hold on, let me make sure it's right. Here we go. <laughs> Edutips.com is .edu. There we go. And here's the, hopefully that's, oh, it didn't make it a live link. Um, you can copy and paste, or you can look at, um, go here. The first Edutip here, it says special instructions for winter upgrade. If you um, have forgotten everything I ever say and need a tutorial, I did print all of this here um, with the pictures. So you can follow along again. Um, so that's really good. And Or if you want to share it with other faculty that you work with that may miss our um, webinars or, or uh, workshops, please feel free to do that. That will really be helpful. So I did make this out here. It's at the edutips.commons um, site for you. Okay. And then I wanted to show you a couple of really cool upgrades. Um, but always ask a question if you wanted. So I'm not going to make this into a big presentation again. So I'm going to talk about Safe Assign and Student Preview, both of which you guys will love like crazy. Spell checks turned on by default in the content editor. It actually works. It makes the little red line so we can check our spelling, us and our students. Yay. I think that's awesome. Um, I'll show you the, how my grades looks for students. They have fixed to that user interface so the students can see their feedback eat more easily and can find it. And then, yeah, right. And then there's anonymous and deleted grading, or delegated grading, I'm sorry, um, that the student, that you can use. So let me show you the first thing. The first thing is safe assign, and I think this is amazing. So if you look here, I'm in my class, my old class, just to give you an example. And under assessment, there's no link for safe assign anymore because when you open the assignment, uh, create assignment area, they've embedded it into, into the space, which is good for a couple of great reasons. Um, test safe assign. So I can't spell. When you guys are looking, I cannot spell at all. All right. So I can put in instructions. I've got my assignment. I've got my assignment instructions. Or I can attach my assignment instructions. I can throw in my due date, um, some random time. Oh, 3 a.m., that's good. Now, now, under grading, this part's new. So make sure in your new environment that you review your assignments this first time around for these, for these items. Under submission details is where you're going to now find assignment type, individual or group. If you have groups set up, um, it won't let me now because I don't have any groups set up. But if you have groups set up, it'll open up a place where, just like it did in the other one, where it says assign to what groups, and you can do that. Um, I'm going to leave this as individual. They also have multiple and single attempts. So if you want multiple attempts, you can put a maximum number. Or if you want unlimited attempts, it opens to this new interface. All this stuff pops up, right? And you can choose from here if you want a student to turn something in, and then they get the highest grade, lowest grade, first graded attempt, or an average. I don't know how you grade, but that's kind of a neat option. I usually use unlimited attempts on um, on these learning module quizzes that I do in my class, but that's in the test feature. But I also let my students turn in their um, da daily homework that we do in class, and I let them work on it during class, and they can submit it so I can see they're there kind of, it's almost like, what do you call it, um, participation points, because they've come to class and we're working on it together. It's our practice, our practice sets. And for that one, I normally have the last graded attempt or highest grade. So if I see they have multiple attempts, I'll just put like a zero, 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 and then 10 points or whatever it is for the final points. And you know, it just helps me organize the grades, and I can kind of walk through it faster. So that's a nice um, option. So you can use that how it works for you. But then the biggest deal here is the Safe Assign has moved to this submission details area, and so it's listed as plagiarism tools. And then we check here. And so then we are telling the machine that it's going to check the submissions from the students using the Safe Assign tool. Now, Blackboard Help has a bunch of info on Safe Assign, so if you've not used it, it's got great instructions on how to create them, uh, Safe Assign, uh, how to read the originality reports, how to um, decipher the report itself if it's citations or if it looks straight copied. And it's kind of a neat tool. And I think I can show you an example of one. Here, um, 
I like to allow the students to see their safe assigned report. And part of that is, you know, so they just have an idea of what they've done. I do have some English faculty who I know are using this as a learning tool. So they'll have a first draft using Safe Assign. And then the students, they get points for turning it in. But then they um, look at their report, and then they are instructed to rewrite their report if they have some really obvious, you know, in, incorrect citations or incorrect summarizing, and they need to go back and fix that. If you're using it as a draft, the um, last button here, exclude submissions, is a good idea um, because then you can have their final draft, if you're going to use it this way, you could have their final draft go in and um, if you don't exclude the submission from the draft report, it will compare the paper to their other paper, which seems odd, but it kind of holds it in there so that if, you know, a student from your, um, you know, Monday, Wednesday class turns in a paper, but then they shared your, that paper with a Tuesday, Thursday student, and they turn it in as if it's their own, you know, we can, Safe Assign kind of uses that, that tool to keep us from, from taking in those kind of papers. But in a first draft instance, we don't want those to be in the database because we're trying to teach them how to rewrite <laughs> their papers. So anyway, um, and, if you, and it sounds a little confusing when I'm saying it after 530, but if you go to the Blackboard help, um, instructor help, and Google, um, search the Safe Assign, it's got a lot of really great stuff in there. So it's something to think about if you haven't used it before. If you use it, this is where you find it. Now, also here, to, you have to open these grading options. This is where you can enable anonymous or delegated grading. Um, the anonymous one is the student's names in this assignment would be hidden during the grading process. So when you go in um, to grade, you would not see the student name, and you can grade them all based on the rubric or whatever. Um, some faculty do that for certain assignments. It's up to you to use that tool or not. It's just an option for you. And then delegated grading, if you've got someone helping you grade a TA or um, I, I, I don't know, a guest instructor, or I don't know what, how, what, why you would do that, but you can um, enable delegated grading and you can put those different instructors in here. Oh, look, Chris Bex is an instructor here. Um, so they'd have to be an instructor or TA um, to show that, that information. So I think that's pretty neat. That's a nice new tool that they've added. Now, the last one, so I can close these, there's little windows, see how they open and close. Display of grades, you can now um, adjust right here in the assignment creation instead of having to go back to the Grade Center column to do it. So here, if you use percentages, you can just go ahead and put the score in as a percentage um, right here in this window instead of having to go back and change the whole Grade Center individually. Or I like to use complete and complete a lot because the students really are just getting like participation points and it just shows a nice green check that they, they were there, they did it. Um, you know, or if you are super gung-ho, you can put like a percentage and then a secondary grade, you can put the letter score. So if the student got 85%, it would show the letter B next to their grade. So it's up to you how you share your um, grades with your students. But as long as I think they're consistent all the way through the grade center, that makes the most sense. <laughs> so you can now change that here. And of course, score is just the number of points. So like you know, 100 points or 10 points or whatever. So that's, that's the default that we've been using. Um, here is where you can include that in the Grade Center calculation. Um, that's, you know, obviously defaulted because, um, you know, they're turning in stuff for points. This one is show to students in My Grades. It's defaulted as it's going to list in the My Grades Center um, in order um, so they can see that that assignment is coming, coming up for them. And then there's the option to show statistics average and median for the item. So as you grade it, the students would see those statistics. I have not used that, so um, if you're using it, you can continue to use it, but you would do that here instead of having to go back to the Grade Center and change all the columns from the back end. Um, and then I think that's it for the new stuff. So, but in the user interface, you know, you've got availability as the last thing. Make it available, and then you can do your display after and until dates um, still here. And then at the very bottom of assignments, there's this thing called track them reviews. I'm trying to get <laughs> Blackboard to turn this on as a default because I think it's really important data. 
especially for online courses. There's a lot of our reports that use this track number of views um, feature. So if you start practicing turning that on into, in all your assignments, I can teach you how to do some really neat reports um, that show what your students have been doing and viewing in, in your um, Blackboard course. And I think that's really helpful. Um, so anyway, I, I just suggest defaulting to it so you can start using those reports just to kind of get a, an idea of what your students are doing in class if that um, is of interest to you. So anyway, that was the entire <laughs> how to set up the new assignment interface, especially, again, using those plagiarism tools. That one's a really neat one. But remember, too, anything you're importing into this environment, it's going to be imported into this new assignment interface. And you do, you might need to come in and adjust these a little bit um, using the new tools if you want to. So you'll um, have, have time to do that now that you have started early. So that's important. Um, I'm going to cancel out of this. And then I'm going to show you some pictures of the next part of this, because I think this is really neat. So I showed you that part and that part. Um, oh, the other part, the other reason why this is really important, if you save sign or begin using it, is the old building block didn't show up in inline grading correctly, but now it does, because it's built into the assignment. So um, here's an example of the inline grading. And so I can see the. Um, Safe assign there. It tells me in the safe assign report this was a hundred percent match because she just gave me a random document that was on her inter her computer, so I could get this um, picture, and then I can view the originality report. So when I click that button over here on the right, it's showing me highlighted everything that's plagiarized, and if there's multiple mm -hmm. things, it'll say um, highlight blue, and it will say I think this is from another student's paper. Highlighted yellow, it will say. Um, this is from Wikipedia, <laughs> and 29% of it <laughs> is from Wikipedia or something like that. And so it really reads down cleanly to tell you what's going on here. Um, and then you still have all these inline grading features. So if you're going to comment on it or mark it up, you don't have to download and upload it like we were doing in the old environment. So I'm kind of excited about this. Um, also, it has this really neat thing called Safe Assign Quick View. And Instead of having to open every single report, you can actually do this quick view of all the, cl the whole class. This is only one student on my view, but it, if I had 25 students, this list would be the 25 students long. It'd show me everybody that submitted, what their highest match is, and everyone that didn't submit. It would have their name and then a, a dash that says, oh, they didn't turn anything in yet. So you get a really nice report here. Um, and you can look at the matches. And a couple of faculty I work with, they say, well, you know, I don't like to take time and do the plagiarism um, check for every single one because I can see the percentage. So on this list, for him, it's like, OK, four people are over 60%. I'm going to focus on those with the plagiarism. But the rest, I'm just going to grade regularly because they're pretty good. You know, they're you know, 20% lower. And those probably are just citations or um, you know, something that is simple, so I don't have to worry about it. But if it's 50 or 60% plagiarized, I'm going to take a good look at it, and then I'm going to give them some feedback on it <laughs> based on the plagiarism tool. So you can see those percentages, and, and that's just kind of neat to see. It's also nice to see kind of your whole class and how they're doing. You know, did they improve from the last one? Are they doing better now? It's kind of a nice view. So anyway, I was pretty excited about that. Do you have any um, questions about the Safe Assign tool? I don't, Laura. I, I haven't used it before, so I, I would have to take a look at it before I would really know how to ask questions. But OK. Well, it's a pretty nice tool. Um, I think it, it raises the bar a little bit if students are writing um, term style papers in your class, um, maybe their final project or something. So it just kind of raises that bar with the plagiarism check. Um, a lot of faculty here are using it. So I know it's it's been a pretty powerful tool for them. So it might be something you look into. Um, so I'm, I'm glad to have shown it to you so you can think about it. <laughs> um, the next thing is the student preview. And I'm going to show this to you live. Um, in this class over here. OK, so here in my live class in my, in my new environment, on the top bar where it has the little home and tells us where we are in the classroom, and the edit mode button over here on the right, kind of circle it, 
Um, there's a little button that looks like an eye with two arrows. That's what I call it. And this is the student preview button. And this makes our underscore student accounts that we were logging in with before obsolete. We don't need those anymore. So I'm going to push this button in my class, and it's going to do some stuff. So now <laughs> it says in the big bright orange bar, student preview mode is on. And now I can actually go through my entire class with a full student view, including seeing the my grades list. Now here's my my grades for this class. Um, I can see things are upcoming. I can see the due dates. If I had grades in here for things I've submitted, I would see those grades. And I think that's really good. <laughs> so I really like that I can do this. Um, in the other version, we couldn't see this. The other thing you can do here is you can go to a, your quizzes or tests. Oops, mine's not working on this one. I think I haven't turned off. Um, and your assignments. Let's see if that one works. Oh, that one's not working for me either. Oh, I wonder why. Ooh, let me try something. That always is helpful when it doesn't work when you're showing people how to use it. Yay, technology. I think it's this edit mode thing. Hang on. I'm going to turn edit mode off. Let me try this. If not, I'm going to have to call someone at IT tomorrow. OK. Um, let me see if that one worked again. Nope, I'm still getting that error. OK, let me take a quick picture of this. This did not happen earlier today. And so I'm going to actually take a quick Jing picture of this and email it to Amy, because <laughs> that's how we roll. OK. I'm going to save that. Error and student preview. So I will send that to IT so student preview will work appropriately when you try to use it. <laughs> so um, earlier today, what we did was we submitted an assignment and took a quiz. And then when we exit um, the preview, which I thought I did. Oh, wait, I did it one more time. It gives you this exit student preview. And if you've actually submitted an assignment or finished a test and you want to look back at it as the instructor, you can say keep the preview user and all its data and say continue. And then you'll exit. But you'll be able to go back to your grade center and your needs grading list and look at those um, examples that you've done. So you can kind of test out as a student user what they're, you know, how they submit things, how they take the exam, and then you can go look at that to grade and see. So if you're, like, you're using a new rubric and you want to figure that rubric out, or if you try, want to try a safe assign um, and see how your document looks in a safe assign report, you can, you can do that. So apparently you can't do it tonight, but I will get that um, <laughs> fixed up <laughs> by sending that picture to Amy and so she can um, look at that tomorrow, because it worked this morning at 8.30, so I'm not sure what's going on there. That is a really um, cool so feature, the, though, the, the student preview. Let's see, what did I say? Oh, yeah, the student preview. That's a pretty neat, that's a pretty neat new tool. Yeah, um, I agree. Let's see what's next. I think, I oh, was just showing you here in the pictures, similar to what I just showed you. And then here's, of course, everyone should clap for yay. Spell check is on so that as we're typing our announcement, if we misspell something, it catches us, catches our eye with a little, little red squiggly line. It's just spell check. It's not the blue lines that wonder if your sentence is typed correctly, but it'll help um, a lot, I think. And then it'll help students, too, because if they're doing discussion board and stuff like that, um, it's going to work in their content areas, too. Um, the grading, we talked about that a little bit when I was showing the assignment. The grading options, they have that anonymous and delegated grading. And if you're an iPad user, the BB Grader app, and it's exactly called that, BB Grader, it's like it's typed here, um, is for iPad. And it, it, it is uh, connected to the new server. So it'll start, uh, it'll be able to work with the spring um, 2016 classes. I think something had got wrong, gone wrong with the authentication codes from this old version but they've updated it and they've tested it, so it's been working. Um, here's your My Grades view. For the students, if you look here on the right, um, this is the feedback you'll see. So now if a student says, where do I find my feedback? You, we say you go to My Grades, and over by your score, there's a little talk bubble, and you click it, and it will open to their assignment, and their feedback will show right there. Um, so that's a little bit more clear, I hope for students. And it looks like a little icon from Facebook or something, so they should get it if they're younger, hopefully. <laughs> I think that's what Blackboard was going for anyway. Um, I'm not sure if 
if you use calculated formulas in your test questions, but if you do, they've added a significant figures option. Um, I have not used it, so I'm not sure how it works. If you're more interested, you can go to the instructor help, and they've got a whole, like, two pages of information on how to make that work and, and, why, it, um, and why it's important, and that's really good. Um, so that was basically my whole webinar. <laughs> uh, I wanted to make sure that if you had time um, this evening to try to um, export one of your files and import it into the new environment, make sure I've connected you with the edge tip um, tutorial so that you have those steps again and the URLs that you'll need. Um, note, though, that every faculty I've worked with that we've done this, um, when you do the import, you're going to get an email from the server, basically says it's from IT call center, and it's going to have a big list of errors. So we're asking that you ignore the errors unless it has some kind of fatal error and then you go look and none of your content is there. But ignore that email for now and go back in and look through your shell and make sure um, that your stuff has moved over. If you have problems or you do get a big red error bar of any kind when you're doing import, IT services is your first line of defense because they can go in and look. Um, but we've had pretty good luck with this, and I haven't seen any big red errors, except just now when I was showing you student previews. So um, I hope that helps, and then you can get um, started a little bit early. Now remember, the whole reason for the getting started this early in November, and for me to be out um, sharing with you as faculty is to um, to remind you that because they have to close Blackboard completely, both both of the instances during the 20, December 23rd through the 1st of January, that if you want to get any work done, that spring, that first week of spring is real short. Um, we come back on the 2nd, and that the 2nd is the first Monday, and the following Monday is the first day of spring courses. So, you know, we just wanted to make sure to get this info out to all the faculty as early as we could so that you have time to kind of work in at least getting your first couple of weeks together for your spring classes. Um, before they actually turn off those servers and get it all cleaned up for us. Um, my hope is, and, and the plan for IT has been to make it a more stable environment um, because we've been working on the same server for quite a long time um, in the environment we're in now. And so they're doing a whole entire new instance to clean it up and to um, get rid of any you know, old junk that was in there, any, any of the broken pieces. So, And that stuff happens in technology, but it's good to... It's good to know they've, they're, they're uh, trying to do something that makes this a little nicer for all of us um, as users. Um, so do you have any questions or comments? Or I might think for a second, see if I left out anything. Well, Laura, I do. Um, uh, as the semester is going on, so for example, in week one of the semester, I have a, 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 a Blackboard shell that I just call, you know, interpersonal communication. It's not one of my classes. It's just a shell that I use to do course copies from. So in week one, I'll update all of the material for week one for the next semester. So I've already updated my material um, for like weeks one through, I think we're in 12 now or 13. Um, so can I copy or can I export that into one of my new courses and then I can still delete all of that when I want to um, export the whole thing or should I wait until everything's ready to export it, export and import it? I would say to keep it clean, you might go ahead and build out your dev shell and export it and import it all together um, okay. because you probably will have assignments and grade center items in there. And if you do it all in one 15-week package, it'll import more cleanly. Um, if you okay. import like weeks one, two, and three with the grade center attached into your new shell, and then you create the next level of sections, um, you'll end up probably with multiple grade center columns, and it might get kind of messy. So I would suggest okay. the whole thing. Now, I forgot to tell you, too, okay. they will be bringing over all those dev shells that aren't connected to CRN numbers, but they're doing that last. So eventually, that <laughs> your dev shell will show up over there, um, but they're not doing that until 
after they make sure all the CRN-based courses are stable. Um, just okay, as a and then so, yeah, I, I would probably actually... because of the way we're doing this, and you're doing it in the dev shell, I would probably build it all the way out and then export and import it into your new Spring shell. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, but I don't copy my assignments. I redo the assignments every semester, so it's just course material. So I won't be yeah, copying the grade center. if it's just course center. materials and it's not attached to grade center, you can bring that right. stuff over as as much as you want. Um, At so any zip time. File, you'll import that zip file, and then it'll just kind of plant in where you want. You can adjust it around a little bit. So, uh, but if you've got quizzes that you're deploying or, um, you know, assignments that have attached grades in our columns that you're importing and exporting, those can get kind of messy if if it's not one. Okay, so, so yeah, I but think I don't okay do doing that, so. The way you're thinking. Okay, so I'm just, um, the, I'm just doing the course You know, and I mean, last but not least, if you think, oh my gosh, all of this is just a big hassle, <laughs> um, you can always wait until the first week of January, <laughs> from January 2nd, log into the, the one brand new instance that everything will be in and just copy like we used to. So, um, except your dev shells might not be there that first week. So, that's, I, um, you might go ahead and do some of that copying or importing now so that you don't lose access to some of that material. Um, yeah. The okay. other thing okay. you could do, hmm, yeah, yeah, I think you're, I think the way you're planning is right. If it's just course content stuff and not assignments, um, building it out and importing it into your spring shell to get yourself ready should be fine. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. Jane, did you have any other questions or or concerns? 